Hey everyone, this is Steve from Mecca with another video tutorial. Today we're going to briefly touch the subject of timing charts. Now, timing charts is a very classical technique that a lot of animators use in the early days. And the thing about timing charts is that it got you thinking about animating without actually having to animate. And picture yourself as a musician, a classical musician, in front of his piano and an empty sheet of music. And what you would do is you'd sort of write out your chord progression and your changes and then you would play your your keys as you would saw fit and, and sometimes it would work and sometimes it wouldn't but what you're ultimately trying to do is, is save some time by thinking ahead and by mapping things out now with animation uh, what you would do is if you had a stopwatch or you had a friend or somebody was videotaping uh, what you would do is you you try to act out the movement or the action and try to get a feel for for how things go. Now, when you're in actual production, what happens is that your shots or your scenes have a set time to it, and that's sort of an advantage because then you can use your timing chart to sort of figure out where drawings are going to go. Now, in a lot of productions today, people don't use timing charts. It's not so much a lost art so much as it's you're working directly on the timeline and so for many people there's almost no need to do it but it's good practice and it helps you to start thinking ahead and it might be helpful if you're doing 3d work or if you're doing stuff on your own uh, it's a very wonderful technique in my opinion and something that I think uh, will help in the future so let's get down to how this actually works so say we're we have a shot and we're shooting it at 24 frames a second and in this shot uh, it's about half a second long or 12 frames now the character is going to look screen left and then he's going to look screen right now what we would do knowing that the shot is about half a second or 12 frames it we do something like this So here we have both extremes or both keys, the screen left and the screen right, or the end pose. Now what we do is, if we were working on this shot, is we need to find out where the breakdown is. So what we do is figure, okay, well maybe this shot, because it's 12 frames, you know, placing it at frame 6 right in the middle is where we can put a passing position. And there we have it. Now the advantages of doing things, you know, digitally is that you can play it all back and forth. So this is sort of a rough timing. You know, here's our first frame, our passing position, and our last key. And it feels all right. Now, what you can do from here is a variety of things. Say we want to, you know, break this down even further between this key and this breakdown. Now what we could do right off from the timing chart is say well we, I'd like to ease out of the first key and then maybe ease into the last key. And what we could do just from the timing chart is simply you know place the positions of our drawings saying that we'd like this one to favor the first key and this uh, breakdown to favor the last key. Now, some people, you know, they start tossing out numbers right away and saying, oh, well, you know, this will be frame three, this will be frame four. But again, it's not an exact science. Uh, you have to test out things and see how they would work. Um, in this instance, I've already gone ahead and you know, played around with the timing. And what I'm going to do is say, okay, well, this is going to be frame four. You know, because I'm going to I'm going to start off on twos, and I'm going to use ones uh, in between to smooth out the action because it's such a, a big change. And then from here, so this would be frame three, four, five, six, seven. Excuse me. And then we go to eight, and maybe ten. And we could do it that way. So four and eight would be breakdown drawings. And I'll show you how that works here and see if we can get something going in between all that. And so 
four is going to favor one. And so I'd try to draw it a lot closer to the first position. And then eight would favor the last position. Now we'll get into arcs of motion in another episode. But for now, this is just to see how all of this would work in a production setting. And I'd shoot this on frame eight. So now if we check our timing, you know, things seem to pan out quite a bit. And then let's say we want to, you know, move things around. Say that, you know, maybe between frame four and frame one, we wanted to add a little bit more time, a little bit more space so we can get more of that action and we can see the frames and how they work a lot clearly. Then it's just a matter of going back and changing numbers, etc. And so if you're a lead or a key animator and you're working in this manner, once you've plotted out your keys and, and the timing is set to your liking, then you can go in and, and tell the in-betweener, well, I want you know, frame 10 to go in between frame 8 and 12, or I'd like frame you know, 3 to go between 1 and 4 or 1 and 5. And, and it's a clear indication of what they want. And you can do this right at the beginning. So once you start animating, you know, it just move very quickly. You wouldn't have to think too much. Now some people will put it on the bottom, some people will put it off to the side. It really doesn't matter. Uh, it, it's your preference. For myself, the way I've done it is I, I tend to work with arcs. So I get to see how my action is going to be. You know, uh, From here I can see that you know his head is going to tilt down just a little bit and I work out the action. Okay, you know, frame 6 will be the one of the breakdowns, the main breakdowns, and then 4 and then 8 etc. Well, I hope you found this helpful. Again, it's a very classical technique. Uh, many animators back in the early days would do this a lot, and it, it really takes a lot of practice um, to get it right. And, and over the years, as you continue to use it, you know, you'll see that you, know, you can animate or you can figure out how the action is going to work without having to do a lot of animating. Um, you can just plot down your, your positions and you know where things are going to go and it makes production a lot smoother and it's just really fun altogether. So thanks for sticking around and hopefully we'll see you in the next tutorial.